True Crime South Africa is published in conjunction with Arena Holdings, publishers of Times Live, Business Live, Sowetan Live and others. The opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Arena Holdings and its affiliates. The following episode may contain sensitive material including descriptions of violence, sexual assault or graphic descriptions of injuries to victims. If you feel you may be triggered by such material, please consider this before accessing our content. To access trauma counselling or services, please see the helpline information on our show notes. Welcome to True Crime South Africa. I'm Nicole Engelbrecht, and you're listening to a Spotlight Minisode, in which we discuss cases that are in the media at the moment. Before we get into today's Minisode, I'd like to thank our new Patreon supporters for the week, a huge thank you goes out to Neil van Heerden, Kerry, Catrione Eaton, and Carrie. Thank you so much, everyone. Your support really is greatly appreciated. If you'd like to support the show on Patreon or PayPal, I'll leave the links in the show notes. We also have new ways to support the show, which include going to the online health store, King Online, and using the code TCSA10 at checkout, for a 10% discount, as well as by purchasing the audiobook The Krugersdorp Cult Killings on Audible. As always, any form of support is greatly appreciated, and it doesn't have to be financial. Sharing of episodes, inviting your friends and family to listen, and interacting on social media are all great ways to keep the show growing and improving. In this week's mini-sode, I'm going to be discussing some of the very strange and horrific cases that have popped up in the media recently. The first case I want to discuss is one that involves the robbery and murder of some of the most vulnerable members of our society. Just as cases involving children are sensitive, so too are cases involving elderly people and we recently saw a horrific case of three murders come to light. The story appears to begin on the 18th of June 2018, when 74-year-old Engela van Veik was found murdered in the retirement village she lived in in Springs. There appeared to have been a struggle, and Engela's hands and feet had been bound, and she had also been tied to her bed. It's unknown how the assailants gained access to the retirement village, or indeed to Engela's unit. The house was ransacked, and any item of perceived value was taken. Her daughter would tell carte blanche that the woman had several family heirloom rings that she intended to leave to her daughter. When Engela's body was found, the container that she kept the rings in was next to her head indicating that the perpetrators had rifled through it in front of her. It is now known that the perpetrators would attempt to gain entry to another retirement home in the area soon after Engela's murder. When that attempt failed, they moved on to Mpumalanga, to Macadamia Care Centre. On the 8th of July 2018, The perpetrators gained entry to the centre by convincing an elderly man that they were there to visit a relative. On this occasion, what we now know to be two male perpetrators were accompanied by a third accomplice, a woman. That afternoon, the body of 85-year-old Heta Pothita was found in the centre's frail care facility. CCTV footage from the scene would provide the first visuals of the perpetrators. Although there was only one camera in the parking lot of the centre, the camera of a physiotherapist next door caught the three perpetrators' activities after the murder, which included swapping out their number plates for stolen ones before driving off. One male had stayed in the vehicle, while another male and female had entered the building. Shortly afterwards, the female is seen leaving the centre and waiting in the car for about ten minutes. The male then exits the building with a skip in his step, looking immensely pleased with himself. Police trace the registration number of the vehicle seen on the CCTV footage 
and discovered that there was still a tracking system installed in the perpetrator's vehicle that they likely knew nothing about. The tracker had been installed by one of the many previous owners of the vehicle and never removed when it was sold. Police had the tracking company reactivate the tracker and they traced the vehicle to Krugersdorp. The perpetrators, Sean Oerstazen, John Deploy and Mandy Forster, were arrested at a campsite in the Michalisburg soon after. The perpetrators were brought back to Nelspreit to appear in court around a charge of the murder of Heta Potkita. Despite protests from investigators on the case, the court released the three on 2,000 rand bail each. Investigators told the courts that, in their opinion, if the trio were released, they would undoubtedly kill again. This plea was ignored, and the three were released. On the 1st of September 2018, while out on bail, Oerstazen and Deploy gained access to another retirement home in Alberton, with another fake story. The 69-year-old resident pretended to take an incoming phone call when she became suspicious of the men. They fled, but the eagle-eyed woman realised that Oerstazen had used her bathroom and drunk from her bottle of mouthwash. When she called police to report the event, she handed over the bottle and Oerstazen's DNA was found on it. Although this would-be victim thankfully survived, this DNA evidence would place Oerstazen in Alberton on the day, and that would have serious ramifications when the men hit another home later that day. Just hours after fleeing the woman's home, the men attacked and murdered 74-year-old Barbara Fenton in her unit at another retirement village in Alberton. The pair once again used the ruse of visiting a family member to gain entry to the village. They would use common surnames and claim that they were there to inform a family member of the passing of another. Barbara's body showed significant bruising. She had been bound and gagged. Her granddaughter got hold of her stepfather, who's in the security business, and he quickly connected the dots, arresting Oerstazen and Deploy within days of the murder. Of the pair, the man says that Sean Oerstazen strikes him as a cold-blooded killer. He believes that Oerstazen was the leader, and John followed his lead. The two men would stand trial for the murder of Barbara Fenton in 2019, and be found guilty, and then in September 2020, they stood trial for the murder of Engela van Veik, and were also found guilty. In January this year, Oerstazen and Deploy appeared together with Mandy Forster for the murder of Heta Porthita. Both men have already received life sentences for the other murders, and the current trial continues. Their families believe that they have been railroaded and that they are completely innocent. Despite the men being behind bars, the investigation into other possible crimes that they may have committed has not stopped, and it is possible that further murder charges will be added to their charge sheet. I'll follow up on this one and keep you updated. In another case of a seemingly cold-blooded group of killers, the trial of a mother and daughter accused of murdering 70-year-old Pietrus Skoltz will begin this week in Port Elizabeth. The two women are half of a group of four people that were arrested in 2020 in connection with the 2018 murder. Wayne Rousseau, his sister Chantal, and his mother Christine have been charged along with 26-year-old Ronald Schwartz. Schwartz has since pled guilty, and his evidence has provided a clearer picture of the gruesome details of the murder. Schwartz testified that on the day before the murder, he was picked up by Wayne Rousseau and taken to a house in Cabega Park, Port Elizabeth, where they came up with a plan to kill the 70-year-old retired electrician. Wayne had allegedly known the man for five years before the murder, 
Schwartz said that Wayne had told him that they would be luring Petrus to the house under the guise of him fixing a broken geezer. They would then kill the man and rob him of his vehicle and tools. Both Chantal and Christine were present, according to Schwartz, when the plan was hatched and they were part of the planning. The Rousseaus did indeed have a faulty geezer, and on the day Pietrus arrived at their home, they made the man fix it before they set about killing him. Wayne and Schwartz had tackled the man in the kitchen of their home, and Wayne had beaten him over the head with a baton until he stopped moving. They then wrapped his face in plastic and placed him into a chest freezer. It is unknown whether Pietrus was in fact deceased at the time that he was placed in the freezer. After the murder, Chantal and Christine had cleaned the blood off the kitchen floor, and then they had purchased McDonald's for dinner with the money they had stolen from their victim's wallet. The next day, the brother and sister sold the victim's tools and purchased meat for a braai. After the braai, Wayne and Schwartz removed Petrus's body from the freezer and dumped it on the side of the road. Schwartz, who was to receive 10,000 rand for his part in the robbery, was never paid, and after pleading guilty, he was sentenced to 25 years for murder and 15 years for robbery. Wayne Rousseau would also plead guilty and be handed down a life sentence. Chantal and Christine will now answer for their roles in the murders. There are several other cases that have come to light recently where the elderly have either been abused or murdered for monetary gain. Just as we respond with the greatest of horror when a defenseless child is murdered, I believe the same is necessary in these cases. These victims are clearly selected because they cannot put up a fight, and sometimes they might be easily convinced. These murderers are some of the lowest, in my opinion, as they purposefully prey on people weaker than them. When an elderly person dies of natural causes, at least their family can continue on in the knowledge that they'd lived full lives and died of perhaps an unavoidable disease or old age. But when an 80-year-old person's life is snatched away in such a horrific way, and their last moments are filled with absolute terror, I just don't know if there is justice enough for that. I am glad that the police are following through with these cases and gaining convictions, though, but I do believe that our courts have to answer for the fact that another person's life was taken by three people that were out on bail. Before I sign off for today, I'd like to introduce you to a true crime podcast that covers cases from the African continent. Crime at Our Roots is a podcast by three ladies, Monique, Phyllis and Aziza, and the cases they cover are not just close to home, but often really bizarre. Here's the promo for Crime at Our Roots. Hey everyone, I'm Phyllis and I'm from Cameroon. I'm Aziza and I'm from Sierra Leone. And I'm Monique and I'm from Cameroon. We are three besties bringing you an intense African true crime podcast. We bring you three crazy crime cases each week, filling your day with suspense. Taking you to different countries on the beautiful continent of Africa each week, even the countries you probably didn't know existed. Because contrary to popular belief, there are 54 of them, and we will give you an interesting fact about each and every one. With some cases you've likely never heard before. The stories we cover go from heartbreaking, solved, unsolved, to absolutely ridiculous. We have a love for true crime and want to share some stories with you from our roots because every victim has a story to tell. We are available on all podcast platforms. Come check us out. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. See ya! I highly recommend checking out Crime at Our Roots for a truly African flavor on true crime. If you enjoyed this minisode, please be sure to subscribe to True Crime South Africa on the platform you're using to listen right now. We're also now available on the Audible app 
and that's a great place for Android phone users to leave reviews for the show. You can also follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. I'll be back next Friday with a full episode. Until then, as always, thank you for your support and I'll chat to you soon.